Thank you, Lord. Tonight I'm going to talk about the final stage of birthing. Anybody that's ever experienced giving birth or seen giving birth, there's stages. And I believe tonight, I'm going to, as I release this, I believe we are stepping into the final stage. I believe this has a lot to do with the church. It has a lot to do with America. It has a lot to do with the personal lives of those that are here listening to this. The rest of this year, I see some things, and I believe that are about to happen. Things are going to be inside out. Completely turned around, backwards, and upside down. Life as we know it, in some ways, is about to end. But I'm not saying for the bad side, hallelujah. That is the enemy's desire, but I believe there's going to be some good things that comes out of all this. And one of the things I believe, a lot of things that we've learned about our history, about America, about everything that's been going on for decades and hundreds of years even, some of it isn't even true. Some of the things that we've learned aren't even the truth. And we're about to find out some of these truths. And it's going to help us. It's going to help us to understand why we had to be where we are right now. And we just give God all the glory and the praise. So I asked God about what was coming, and I heard him say these words. I'm excited. I asked God what's coming. He said, I'm excited. If God's excited, then we all should be pretty happy. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is near and at hand, and there's a new pattern of God's kingdom that's going to be ever increasing in this coming season. The old pattern is going to be replaced. The old way of doing things is going to be replaced with a new one. And intimacy and the passionate for the king of kings is going to be our utmost importance. Everything's going to be turned inside out. In other words, we cannot, we will not know what the normal is. It's like we're going to have to learn things again. Some of the biggest learning is going to be now. It's even going to blow the minds of the young people. And it's going to come completely because God's light's going to completely expose evil corruption and begin to cleanse everything. There's going to be a huge movement of purity is supposed to begin in 2021. A movement of purity. And a land that's going to be healed. Everything's going to be turned upside down. Think about things that are turned upside down. It's never a good thing, it seems, does it? Imagine if you get an ice cream cone and it's turned upside down. Something's wrong with this picture. Get a piece of cake and it's turned upside down. It can be an issue. Our life turned upside down. Things like righteous, godly morality, people will be moved from the bottom of the ladder to the top. People that have not been able to get to that next level are going to be able to get to the top of the ladder all of a sudden. The blockage of a spirit that's been hovering over America and world that's been trying to hold people down and keep people down, that spirit's going to be broken, the assignment's going to be broken, and we're going to see a progressive increase like we've never seen. Kingdom principles that seem to sum upside down will begin to be enacted and apparent to all. God took me to a scripture 
Isaiah 54, 7 and 8. It says, for a mere moment I have forsaken you. Think about this. This is, for a mere moment I have forsaken you. But with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face. For you, from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is a big word, but this is going to be a true shift, a a transformation like we've never seen shift. Everything is going to be shifted. I want to stay here just for a moment because God had me look up the word redeem. Because that's what he's he's about to do in our lives. It means to get or to win back. It's time to get or to win back. Everything that's been withheld from us, we're going to get and we're going to win back. Another one is to free from what distresses or harms. So if we've been harmed or distressed, we're going to be free from that. Another one, to release from blame or debt. Think about what I just said. To be released from blame or debt. Another one, to... Extricate from or help to overcome something detrimental. To change for the better, reform, repair, and restore to bring back to the original state and design. To free from the consequences of sin. Some of the things that's been going on in America for a very long time are the reason why some things have been withheld for the body of Christ in America. And God says, no more. The Lord redeems, the Lord that redeems will turn around from lack to abundance. Sickness to health. Depression to joy. Thousands of hearts to align and agree with his heart. This next line annoyed me a little bit. But I heard it several times before I Put it down. Twenty twenty one will be a great and historic year of the Lord. And it's just the start of the best is yet to come. You say, How why did that annoy you? Well, if you don't know, then just move on. Hallelujah. Psalms 34, 18 says, if your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, anybody feel that? He'll help you catch your breath. It seems no matter who you are and how much we love Jesus, there remains a broken area in our lives that God is still working on. I don't believe anybody in this room or anybody listening to this online that can literally say there's there's nothing in your life that isn't broken. Jesus is still working on something in your life. God says, I'm in your brokenness, and when things didn't go the way you planned, 
I didn't answer the way you thought I would. But I'm still here. And you are under my wings, saith the Lord. See, God is breathing right now on the brokenness of America. Some people are so easily turned to anger because they're broken. Some people are looking for a reason to whine. See, nothing is wasted in the hand of our Redeemer. All things work together for our good to those who love the Lord. Even our pain, even our disappointments, and things that don't make sense. Are we in a season of not making sense? There had to be another way. Could it be that we've tasted brokenness in order to relate to somebody who's broken? Can you feel it? Broken hearts, broken dreams, broken hopes, broken bones. If you've had something broken, you can relate. Maybe we should take some time and weep for those who can't weep anymore. And you know, one of the major things, I might get ahead of myself here, but I know what's in here. Some of the people right now that God is moving right now for are people that cannot cry anymore because of the tortures they've experienced. They have no more tears left. They can't cry. They can't resist. They have no fight left in them. Psalms 56, 8 says, You take account of my wondering. Put my tears in your bottle. And they not in your book. Lord, let this be a year. And let us find you. Let our dreams begin to come true. Not just for over ourselves, but to heal the broken and dying world. Whether the media says it or not, there are children that are imprisoned still today. Sex trafficking is rampant in America and they have no more tears left to cry. As I was preparing this sermon, I saw a seven-year-old girl who couldn't cry anymore as these three men took advantage of her. In the spirit, I saw this. And God said, this is one of tens of thousands that is happening right now. By people that you would never expect. Elite in America. Children in prison and sex trafficking, no more tears left to cry, staring into outer space as they're being taken advantage of. Tearless generation robbed of emotions. They probably wouldn't even know how to be happy if somebody came and tried to do anything nice to them. And it's not just children, there's animals as well. There's things that's gone on for way too long. 
And God's about to expose it all 100%. And even the media will have to report everything. Older people in rest homes, weeping. Nobody's hearing their cries. Perhaps when we weep with those who weep, our brokenness begins to heal. And our broken wings want to fly right now. Imagine some things we've gone through that we say, oh my goodness, we've gone through it. But imagine some of these people were born into trafficking. They were, they were took from their family as soon as they were born and used for this purpose. The church and its ministry for this type of generation that is coming. There's going to come a time that any church that is actually moving with God will have a few of these people sitting in their church to be mended and put back together again, piece by piece. God's the only one that can fully heal these people. I said God's the only one that can fully heal this kind of people. See, per perhaps when we weep with those who weep, our brokenness will begin to heal. If we can weep with this kind of generation, these kind of people, imagine... There's something soon about to be revealed in tunnels that has not yet been revealed. Have the violent winds of life knocked you down? Have you forgotten that you were born to fly in spite of the winds? See, they were blowing hard against you so that you could go higher in God. Sometimes we get knocked down because we're supposed to be going up. And briefly, very briefly, going to talk about kingdom for family. Kingdom of God for family. Because each of us are a part of a family. We didn't pick our family. And I'm not just talking about this family. Because if I had a choice to pick this family, I would. I'd pick the family I have right now. But that's not the family I'm talking about, even though that is part of it. We have had or have parents, siblings, nieces, nephews. Some of us have children. Some of us may even have grandchildren. I have no, no rush for that, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get through college and a little more. Hallelujah. But the enemy of our souls, which is Satan, is after our kids. And I mean this, and I don't mean this with disrespect. I mean this as fact. A lot of this generation is ignorant about what the spiritual climate is all about. When you get to the point where you accept this, and then you accept that, then you accept this, then you accept that, next thing you know, you have accepted things you should have never accepted. And it doesn't mean we're rejecting anybody. Don't get me wrong. We got some things and people coming into the body of Christ in the days ahead, coming into the church that is going to be accepted, that's going to be ministered to, that's going to be loved upon, and it's going to be a, a wild ride. God's already said that. 
But we got to understand that there's a lot of deceit that has happened. We get filled with concern and anxiety for our young people and how they're growing up and what they're growing up into. We don't need to shrink back. Don't just watch and see how it's going to pan out either. We have a weapon. God says use it. The power of prayer over scripture. There's scripture that we can pray. I said there's scriptures we can pray. For those of us that are parents, I firmly believe that it is essential that we learn how to pray scripture over our family. The Bible says, and the next time worry or anxiety creep in, crush Satan with the word. Pray scripture over your child. Don't give up praying until you see a breakthrough. Not only will it be will it help quiet your anxiety, but I believe we will see tangible changes in family when we persist. Because that's the biggest part of it. The title of this sermon again was talking about the final stage of birthing. So that's what we ought to get into now. Because the breakthrough that we've been trying to obtain is on its way. Just as other breakthroughs finally did arrive, this breakthrough is on its way. Things that have not happened yet, seem delayed, are going to come forth. You will experience deliverance from the issues where you haven't been able to receive complete breakthrough. Prophecies not yet fulfilled are going to manifest. Believers who have been so discouraged as they press through to their breakthrough but don't see the full manifestation It's a time to get excited. This would be complete deliverance for some in the areas where they haven't received their breakthrough. I'm talking about all of a sudden, it's going to, things are just going to happen. All of a sudden. Lord's been showing me, it's like the final push. It's time to get into some detail about that. The final push. You will receive complete deliverance with all of your waste pushed out. You say waste. Yeah, all the waste is going to be pushed out. I got to say this the way I was supposed to say it. The placenta is as an organ. It contains the waste of the body's blood. The placenta is expelled from the body after birth. And you have to do it through an act of labor, through pushing. The Lord reminded me how we have to push out our destiny, deliverance, prophecies, and to give birth to them. Birth is something you have to labor for to see the results. You cannot just wait for it. Labor is defined as having difficulty doing something despite working hard. To exert one's powers of the body or mind, especially with painful, strenuous effort. The Lord continued to reveal that we have to exert ourselves when we want something. But that people aren't pushing and putting in the effort because they're stuck in passivity and stagnancy. 
See, a lot of us, we're just stuck doing the same thing we've always done. Same thing we've always done. God's wanting us to push. Sometimes we give birth and we're like, okay, I've already given birth. The baby's here. The fulfillment is here. But guess what? Now we got to push out that waste. We got to finish the process. Why? Because it all has to come out. It's all part of the same section. See, a lot of people are tired and they feel defeated instead of walking in the victory and hope. Despite opposition, you have to move forward and put in what appears to you to be a painful, strenuous effort. We love easy. A lot of people wouldn't use a microwave if they had to crank it. Keep it running. Like the old wash machines, you used to have to wind them like this. Hallelujah. See, to push is a vigorous effort to obtain something. I think children would probably ask for less things if they had to push it out every time. (laughs) Come on. And every push would be a little bit more difficult. You want a certain shampoo you had to push? Well, that's probably a 10, 15 minute push. Hallelujah. Come on. You want a new car? There's about seven hours of pushing. Come on. And all between. Come on. Push. Someone will be like, well, forget it. I'll just get a bike. Hallelujah. I'll just be friends with people who have a car. Hallelujah. See, it means to thrust forward, downward, or outward, move forward by using force to exhort oneself continuously, vigorously, obstructively to gain an end or press forward energetically against opposition. See, sometimes when you're giving birth, there's a part of your body that doesn't want to get it out. There's another part of you that has to get it out. So it's like a fight going on. See, it means we have to make an effort to get forceful against the kingdom of darkness before the kingdom of darkness gets forceful against us. You have to push. You have to pull, you have to yank, you have to get going to see our deliverance come to pass. Prophetic words manifest, dreams, desires come to full manifestation. The Lord has been revealing people that haven't got their breakthrough in a long time. It's coming. Because We're going to push it very, very hard. See, during birth, you cannot start and quit. See, some people, they start, but then they're like, I'm tired. I just can't do it anymore. That is unacceptable. You cannot stop now. Once the process has started, come on, you have to complete it. You have to go. You have to get it done now. And that's why sometimes whenever we are trying to get breakthrough with our prophetic, our dreams, our, 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 our lives, our children, whatever it is, we're trying to get the breakthrough. America's going for the biggest breakthrough in all of our lifetimes. And when you're trying to give birth to those things, it's, it's not going to be an easy thing. And there's part of us and some of us that are probably like, oh, I'm just tired of pushing I'm just tired of pushing. But you can't stop now. Why? Because we're crowning. We're at the end. We're at the last push. Man, if we could just push a little bit longer, a little bit more, things are going to begin to pop. You go and give up. You go and give up. We cannot give up. 
You have to put in the effort. Scripture says, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our war are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bring every thought into the captivity and obedience of Christ. See, pulling down strongholds takes efforts. Capturing every thought, bringing it into obedience, subjecting it to the Bible. It gets tiring. We get tired of fighting. But we have to do it. The placenta contains the waste from the baby's blood. And through this time of impartation, listen, the Lord revealed how he purchased our waste with his blood. Did you understand what I just said? Placenta is full of waste and blood. But Jesus, because of his blood, paid the price for our waste with his blood. Jesus is removing the waste from our blood in this season. We have to push it out, though. We have to labor. It clearly showed me. He, he showed me this, and he showed me some people this will be the final labor hour, the final push. Be disciplined and obedient for what he is calling you to do. Be intentional and be intense so that you can walk in the full manifestation of God's will in your life. It's time for that final stage. This is it. For some of us, we've been... We've had false birth pains over the last years. We've had some times when we thought we were ready, but it wasn't time. But now it is. Come on. But you're not just a push until you see the baby or see the fulfillment or see the progress. But we want to get the waste out too. Why? Because it's already been paid for. Come on. We did, in other words... I hope this crisscrosses the way I see it. Every day that we feel like we've wasted, every day that we feel like we've been delayed, we're about to push that out so that we get payback for everything we haven't received yet. We're going to get back and more. It's going to be better than any stimulus from the government. Hallelujah. When God blesses you, when God gives you a stimulus, it's not going to have anything attached to it. Thank you, Jesus. But God is about to do such a, a move in this birthing. When we get it done, I'm telling you, you're going to be so happy. But instead of laying there in the bed exhausted, instead of laying there just embracing that that you've given birth to. And then maybe going to sleep for some time. Then after this birth, you're going to rise up and go to do exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Lord, we just give you praise right now.